Okay, today we're going to talk about the building blocks of the building blocks. How clueless are scientists regarding the syntheses of the four classes of compounds needed for construction of a cell? So, the reasons for this series, again, I've just got to go through it because in case anybody's joining us for the first time for these series of lectures, Dave Farina posted a video entitled Elucidating the agenda of James Tour, a defense of abiogenesis. You can see the description box below for, below for the link. Now, I've never said anything against abiogenesis. I've always said, we just don't know. We're absolutely clueless on how it happened, and I'll maintain that. There were numerous gross scientific inaccuracies in Dave Farina's claims, in my opinion. Since others might likewise be confused, I will use the Farina video with timestamps is the launch point for this video. So in this video, you'll see where it'll say like 6.23. That means it's six minutes and 23 seconds in Dave Farina's video, he said, or he claimed this. Now, Dave is, is characteristic of what other people might be thinking too. So I'm thankful that Dave Farina attempts to teach the layperson about scientific topics on his YouTube channel, which is entitled Professor Dave Explains. So Dave, I'm giving you a, a shout out here. That's a commendable endeavor. I therefore seek no contest with Dave Farina, only to bring in clarity. I just think that, that everything that he said in that video was wrong. And uh, I've never looked at any of his other videos, so I'm not judging those at all. I'm just saying in this, in this one area of synthetic chemistry, uh, I just think a lot was wrong, and we've got to address these things. Because many people, I think, probably learn from Dave, and then they, teachers might go in their classroom and teach these things. So we've just got to get this thing right. Uh, other synthetic chemists can comment and point out where I'm correct or incorrect. I mean, anybody can comment. Uh, but I particularly invite the critique from my synthetic chemist colleagues and students studying synthetic chemistry and those studying origin of life. If disputing was something I have to say, if you could provide a, a literature reference for something that you talk about, that would be tremendous. Because uh, one of the problems with Dave's video, it, was only, it only gave me one reference to really look at, and we've already seen that the, the problems that, that occurred with that. If you're looking for, for some slam down contest between Dave Farina and myself, I will just complain, I will just proclaim here, no contest. Uh, Dave Farina can win. I am just trying to bring in clarity. So I mean nothing as of a personal attack upon Dave. Uh, so remember the building blocks of a car that we talked about? These, these are the parts of a car. This is not all the parts, because obviously some of this is already constructed. You have these seats already put together here. You have parts already put on the car here. But there's a lot of pieces. Could you put that together? Could you? Could you put that together? Uh, probably few people could put that together. Now, if you had no directions, could you put it together? Very few could put that together. Some people could, but very, very few. What if you had no tools? What if you didn't have a, a ring compressor to compress the rings when you were putting the pistons in? Uh, what would you do? Maybe you'd do like in the Grapes of Wrath, where they put a wire around it, and then that wire burned away as the engine ran. Uh, but it'd be hard with no tools. You need building blocks for a car. Each one of these parts is a building block for the car. Well, where do you get those building blocks? Oh, that's easy. You just go to rockauto.com. On Rock Auto, you can go to look up any vehicle, look up any year, and it's very well organized, and you can buy the parts for your car. So this is, again, a shout-out for rockauto.com. You can buy the parts. But what if the parts weren't available? What if you couldn't buy the parts at Rock Auto? You had to go back to the basics and make each one of those parts. What would you do? What do you mean back to the basics? I mean to, you need the building blocks 
to build those building blocks. To build those building blocks, you need something to build those. Well, that's what you need. You need bauxite, which is aluminum ore, to make all the aluminum parts. You need copper ore to make the copper parts. You need iron ore to make the iron parts. And then you need crude oil to make all the plastic, all the foam cushions, all the synthetic seat covers, any piece of plastic covering over a wire. All that comes from crude oil. Now I ask you, how many people know how to get crude oil into all these forms of plastic? Probably very few. Some, but probably few. How many people know how to take copper ore and get copper out of it so that it's a usable form so you can make all that copper wiring? How many people know how to take iron ore and turn it into steel? How about bauxite or aluminum ore and turn it into first aluminum oxide and then treat the aluminum oxide with a carbon electrode and a very high voltage where your sacrificial carbon electrode goes to CO2 and you reduce the aluminum oxide to aluminum metal. How many people know how to do that? It's hard. So if I told you to go ahead, build that car, build all those building blocks, this is what you have to do to build the building blocks because you're starting with a prebiotic earth. This is what you have to do. Now, if you really had a prebiotic earth, you wouldn't have any crude oil because remember, it is supposed that crude oil is a product of biological degradation. But uh, uh, let's just say you had these and I said, go ahead and build that car. Here's what I'll give you. You'd be like, there's no way. There's no way I can do that. Well, that's what you're stuck with. That's what origin of life is up against. It's not just taking building blocks that you can get from rockauto.com, building blocks that you can buy from a manufacturer. It is not buying the carbohydrates already put together in the form that you want. It is having to make those from prebiotic chemicals. It is not taking each one of these compounds and making it from the known building blocks. You have to build the building blocks first before you can use those building blocks to make uh, what you want to make. So, in, in uh, that video, this is a, a, a call out from the video. Carbohydrates are a bit more complex since despite consisting of the same monomer over and over, they don't consist of the same monomer, which, which uh, 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 we, we, will, we covered already. They consist of different monomers, lots of different monomers. And, and uh, uh, pointing this out, Dave did say the individual units can connect in different ways. He certainly did say that. They can connect in a number of different ways. But I don't think he said trillions and trillions of ways. Remember, why does it hook up this hydroxyl to this position? And why is this position down rather than up? Because this is an anomeric center, so it can be alpha below or beta above, and each one of these positions. And so he said synthesizing carbohydrates is trickier, though we are making progress on that too, and we already dealt with that. And some say any biomolecule is easy to synthesize. Jim knows this. He's a synthetic chemist. What he probably means is that we haven't seen these biomacromolecules form spontaneously outside of a biological system. But that's not what he says. So again, all of those videos that I was speaking on, those were all started out on origin of life. And so I didn't qualify every sentence. I qualified at the beginning of, 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 of the, the, the talk. But that's, that's, that's not an important point. The thing is that there is this perception that biomolecules are easy to synthesize. Well, they're not easy to synthesize, as I'm showing, but they would be really hard to synthesize if you had to build the building blocks of the building blocks. What if you could, I couldn't buy glucose and you had to make it? What if you had to make glucose? That's really hard to do, especially with prebiotic chemicals. He went on further to say nucleic acids, proteins, these are utterly trivial to synthesize. We even have machines that do it for us. Jim is constantly talking about how we don't know how to make the four classes of biomolecules, which are nucleic acids, proteins, carbohydrates, and lipids. This is ridiculous. Nucleic acid synthesis and protein synthesis are utterly trivial. It's so easy to do that we even figured out how to make machines that do it for us. We type in the sequence we want on a computer, let the machine run, and we can get a DNA strand of any sequence of nucleotides we want or a protein of any sequence of amino acids we want. Wow, 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 wow. Um... Any origin of life researchers out there that, that would like to defend this statement? Uh, you know, it's, it's, 
what every one of these machines is doing, it's starting with the building blocks. It's essentially gone to Rock Auto and already bought the pieces. But what if you had to make the pieces? And even with those pieces, it's not easy, as I've showed you and going to be showing you. Uh, I, I don't know why people think that this is so easy. Maybe it's because of the way Origin of Life researchers have written their papers. But it's not easy at all. What if... What, and, and here's some more. He said, most lipids are easy to synthesize. They're made off of a triglyceride. Some have said... And lipids like triglycerides can be synthesized easily. Well, we're going to cover that. We're going to show it's not that easy, especially when you're dealing with prebiotic methods. All right, here's the misconceptions. Some have said any biomolecule is easy to synthesize. And further, uh, and, and further said... Jim knows this. He's a synthetic chemist. What he probably means is that we haven't seen these biomacromolecules form spontaneously outside of a biological system, but that's not what he says. Does not make the distinction, and this seems deliberate on his part. Okay, as far as the psychoanalysis uh, and what's deliberate and what's not deliberate, uh, I'll, just, I'll just walk past that. No, I didn't know that. And neither does any other synthetic chemist. It is difficult for chemists to make most macromolecules and usually impossible when restricted to prebiotic chemicals and methods. And much harder for the prebiotic earth where the earth could not buy the 20 amino acids in homochiral form or the carbohydrates or the nucleotides or the lipids, all of those in homochiral form. Those are the building blocks of the building blocks. And no chemist in her right mind would support the nonsensical claim that any biomolecule is easy to synthesize. That's a gross misunderstanding. So, polysaccharides, their building blocks are monomeric sugars. The monomeric sugars are purchased and obtained from living systems. You purchase them. The, the companies from which you purchase them, they never synthesize from the bottom up these monomeric mono, uh, sugars. They obtain them from living systems. So biology has already supplied this. Rock Auto is supplying this. There was no Rock Auto on early Earth. There was no manufacturer selling these things. Early Earth had no biological systems from which to isolate the sugars. Proteins, their building blocks are amino acids, which are purchased and obtained from living systems. The reason you can make polypeptides, the reason you can hook amino acids together is because you buy the amino acids from a company that has isolated them from a natural source through the digestion of proteins uh, and, and uh, uh, through the cleaving of the, 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 the amide bonds there in the proteins. And these were all obtained from living systems. They were taken from biology. But when you don't have that, what are you going to do? Nucleic acids, their building blocks are nucleotides, which are purchased and obtained from living systems. You purchase the nucleotides from companies. Now, they're not purchased in the raw form. They're purchased already protected so that it can go into your, your synthesizer if you still have a synthesizer. Most of this is farmed out right now. But these are purchased, and but they're obtained from living systems. These are molecules that are isolated from biological systems and then functionalized with the protecting groups. Lipids, their building blocks are fatty acids and glycerol, which are purchased and obtained from living systems. The fatty acids, uh, 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 they're not found in nature. They're not found in a prebiotic earth. Those are products of biological systems. The glycerol is the product of a biological system. All right, so where do origin of life researchers get their chemicals for their stereoscrambled syntheses? They don't make them homochiral, but even for their stereoscrambled syntheses. Well, the gases, they all have conveniently separated into individual cylinders. How convenient. And then the, the chemicals that they need, the basic chemicals that they need, they just go to the shelf and they pick them up. They're all purified in a bottle as purchased. But early Earth, prebiotic Earth, didn't have that luxury. All the gases were mixed together. So you want to, you wanna, where did early Earth get its chemicals for homochiral syntheses? It had ammonia, presumed methane, oxygen, CO2, hydrogen sulfide, water, uh, sulfate, formaldehyde, carbonate, uh, formate, 
hydroxide, cyanide, cyanate, metal oxides, had all of those things, probably had all of those things. But where, 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 where are you going to get those on an early earth? Right there. They're all right there. Go, go on out there and find them. Okay, so, so, so origin of life, students working in, in labs, they're doing origin of life. Your, your, your professor says to you, no, you, you, can't, you can't go to the, we don't, we don't have any stores of chemicals and gases. Just go out and find them. Go out and find them. Now you have to find them on a prebiotic earth before there was, there, there was any life. You got to find all these chemicals. And remember, all the gases are mixed together. They're, they're not conveniently in cylinders. Uh, you have to find it all out here. You don't have rockauto.com to call upon. You can't go there to get it. You only have rocks. That's it. You only have rocks and that atmosphere. Imagine the constraints upon an, a prebiotic earth. Summary, building blocks of the building blocks. To date, nobody has even made the building blocks of the building blocks for the necessary four classes of compounds needed for life while using the chemicals that would have been available on an early earth. Yet somehow, under a rock, someplace, the synthesis happened and bingo, life was birthed. You think that? You really think that? We're clueless regarding even the building blocks of the building blocks. Remember, the building block would be a protein. We're clueless on the amino acids for making the proteins, let alone the construction of a cell. I mean, that's a big deal. So that's where we are, and uh, hopefully I can shed some light on it. And uh, we'll pick it up in the next video talking about peptides and, and, and uh, proteins and the, the building blocks of the building blocks for those amino acids. Thanks for joining us. If you want to subscribe, just click right here, subscribe, and we'll give you a shout out when the next video in this series comes out. Thank you.